Well, Gatanga is the capital of the Upper East region of Ghana, with a land area of 1,620 km square, a beautiful Guinea savanna woodland with different species of trees and scrubs, with a population predominantly farmers. It is popularly known as the craft center of the Upper East region with a large central market. I am here at the Bogatanga Craft Village. Beautiful piece of handmade craft, you know, that people can pick up anytime they visit the three northern regions from, from baskets to hats to, to bags to, to jewelry to leg rest, to, I mean from leather to smocks, what have you. Many beautiful souvenirs that people who visit, domestic tourists and uh, foreigners who come to the three northern regions can just pass through the Borga Craft Village. I've heard so much about the Craft Village and I decided to pass here with my crew just to have an appreciation of what goes on here, appreciate the state of work or what under what conditions they do work and how this facility to a large extent boosts tourism and what kind of investment they would need to make this place a great tourism attraction. So stay with me and let's take a tour around the Borga Craft Village. of craft work as you can find inside and then we do a lot of artwork we try to modernize the existing art and craft works that we have to suit the, the, the modern times and that sort of thing these are indigenous uh, artworks and we need you know we need support from the powers that be take for instance the bulga basket you look at the very beautiful patterns, the way it's been made, look at the leather work, the handy work that, is, that, that gets into it. And somebody, if in New York, somebody picked a basket from me. I said it was just uh, uh, $20. I said, how long, how, how long will it take to make one? And when I said three days, he said, no, that's too bad. You know, the, the craftsman who is able to make this should be earning about uh, $300 a day. You see that? So, um, what prevents us from putting in something? So this is, in the, this is a, a very good area that the authorities will have to look at. Take for instance, the grass that is used to weave, I mean the vertebral grass that is used to weave the basket now, is extinct in the whole of the northern, northern Ghana. You, our ladies travel from here back to Kumasi, go to Ijusu, where the, the, the swamps in Ijusu, that is where they go to pluck the straw. Now the straw is put in cars, it comes back to Borga for the common person to now weave. So you see that this in itself is, you know, is counterproductive. On the creative side, I assure you that we have done very well for ourselves. On the purchasing side, where Ghanaians believe in the products and are willing to spend money on them, I'm afraid we haven't done too good. Sometimes we have some customers that we are exporting for them if they come, like transfer, we're exporting for them and then uh, the tourists also are coming, the white people are coming and then blacks too are coming. The first it was good but now the market is small. The people are, people are no more coming again. You enter the aeroplane with this and because of the, 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 the weather, the, 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 we need a tanning industry in Borga. That will tan all the leather, make it so soft and very competitive in the world market. And remove the scent, that is even the most, uh, this thing, a, a tanning industry that will remove the scent from the leather and make it, make it very, very competitive so that all the things that we make like wireless and other things will not smell anytime they are subjected into the humid uh, this, I mean, uh, uh, climate. Is it not possible for us to just consciously say that the edges may not be that fine, 
the paintings are peeling off. But still, it speaks to me. It is ours. And so I'm willing to invest in it. It's not good enough to say that. And as you purchase, you give the creator opportunity to improve upon it. Look at this carpet. It's been seasoned. But you cannot, you cannot say that the, the, the scent is removed 100%. But this is quite better than what we used to have before because this is almost, I mean, it's, it's been seasoned up to about 80%. So you can't, the, the, the scent is dead, almost dead. But the white man will still tell you that, yeah, 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 yeah. It, it smells, it leaves a certain type of smell that he wouldn't like. What prevents us? Instead of buying uh, maybe some art investing in articulators and that sort of thing, when I say this, I don't mean just the government alone. But those who are here, our rich men around, who are investing in articulated tracks, the U-turn buses and what, because the entire leather industry, I mean that the, the, the tanning uh, the, the equipment, will not cost more than five U-turn buses. So what prevents the, the, the richer people here? Maybe two, three, five of them bring your heads together. Tell the government, oh, we want this land from the government. We want to use it to establish a leather, a tanning uh, recent plant. I sell leather products such as footrest, ladies and men bags, leather sandals, that's footwear, bracelets, necklaces, and a lot. We don't have that ability to advertise our products on the media. I believe that is why people don't know here. And maybe when we are uh, we are to ship at least a 20 footer container or a 40 footer container, you need about 10 to 20 workers, leather workers, if you need it in, in a very short period of time, so that the work will go fast. But if something that we are going to keep here and sell, at least two to four people can sit down, do your leather works for you. If I have enough money, I can buy the goods, stock. When anyone comes in to buy, and at least you get a peswa on each product, you make money. But because the money is not there, I can't buy a lot to stock. There are some times that, especially these bulga baskets, there are some times that they come, the prices come down. And when the money is there, many of them, you keep it. And when the, the market rises, then you sell them out. But the money is not there. For as long as our interest and our appreciation is towards foreign goods, we are contributing to siphoning money out of this country. But if we put our interest and, and our economic power behind the creative people, people are making clothes, people are making bags and shoes and, and all these crafts, we are keeping the money in this country. Our mothers as old as 80, 90 and that's of they are in the rooms and they are the people who thread, who use the cotton to spin, to make these authentic ropes, I mean the, the thread. Uh, while they are doing that, they can no longer go to the farm. So you see that they are engaged in that, uh, the, 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 that aspect of art. After they have done that, this is now sent out and it is used to do the weaving. We equally need very good dyes. You know, very good dye, dyes that do not smell, dyes that will stay in the clothing, and dye that will not easily fade off. For especially the smoke industry and then uh, the, the, the leather, I mean, the, the leather items. The problem of the entire North is ignorance and poverty. Each one complementing the other. So whilst we are trying to play down on, work on the ignorance level, empower the people to be productive, to be uh, that sort of thing. It is equally good to do something now so that the people can feed on. I decided to play that kind of verset at the Ganiba Africraft Limited. When I got here, I found him holding this interesting headgear. It doesn't feel too comfortable, but I decided to try it on. And he gave me this beautiful goat skin, I mean, call it a regalia. And he tells me it's something very peculiar to the frafres. Yeah. Now, Duncan, I don't know if you can see me too well, yeah. but I can't, I can't breathe well. Yeah. <laughs> what, what is this, this, this regalia? What does yeah. it represent? This is the war regalia. Mm. Yeah, a regalia we wear when things are, uh, you know, at their peak. You mm. come out with this it's as, as a symbol of uh, resistance. Okay. Now, this is a war helmet that is moving you into the realm of 
uh, being a monster or okay. anything, any creature that can that 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 that. So that, what, that, do that. I look scary now? Yeah, yeah, you look scary. Really? Yeah, and children okay. will run away from you. Now, <laughs> this is uh, you can see that even in South Africa, Chaka de Zulu, and yeah. they use this, they use similar. Uh, so this is what goat skin. So this is yeah, this is a mountain goat, and then we use this, and uh, we have the mountain goats. We have the mountain rams mm. in mountains uh, in Balungu. When you okay. go to you know between Palugu and Borga, you meet yeah. Balungu. Okay. Okay. When you go inside, there is a mountain, a, a mountain there called Satane. Satane. I, I haven't been there yet. Aha, uh -huh. we have Satane, Atahia, and all this. Okay, all those things are there. But where are you from? I'm from Balungu. Balungu. Okay. Yeah, I'm from okay. Balungu. But uh, I, I work and stay mm. in Borgai. So these are the, the, the goats yeah. skin from this that is the area. Goats skin from that area. Mm. Now, uh, wh when you wear this, it's a symbol of protection. Okay. If I should try to cut you with a knife, it will not enter immediately, and you can fight. But it, it can it, enter. Yeah, it will not enter immediately. But it may not enter actually. Oh, if yeah, yeah. Sure. If I <laughs> don't know, they are, it will depend yeah, on how yeah. sharp the knife is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> then. It's so, not a talisman, is it? No, no, no it no, is no. not a talisman. But no we charms. have others that will put charms in them. Uh, yeah, and those and charms work? They work, they work. Uh, yeah. yeah. Anybody who tells you that anything in Africa don't work, it is not. The person is not an <laughs> African. It works. Okay. It works, yeah. Even okay. you know Napoleon Bonaparte. Mm -hmm. Any any time he wanted to attack a group of, yes. of, of people, he first of all I, I consult to find out whether they have got luck. Mm -hmm. What was that luck? It didn't mean that you know the people didn't have war superiority and that sort mm -hmm. of weapons to fight against him. But he wanted to find out whether they had luck, because mm -hmm. the la luck is something that you can you cannot you know you cannot uh, explain explicitly. Okay. Yeah. So okay. once you have this, maybe it gives you luck, and that luck is what we take. Why would I go for blessings and go for luck? No, blessings are the same things. L luck and blessings are well, the same things. Blessings are more more from the Most High. They are more spiritual in uh, terms of coming from your Creator. No, the luck power, is, mm -hmm. the power of luck and the power of uh, what you're talking about, mm -hmm. it's all from the Creator. It's like the Akosombo uh, light. Okay. You can choose to use it to iron your things and look fine. A, a very bad lady can decide to use that same iron to iron the back of a maid servant. I get you. So, it's you know, it is how you use it. Mm -hmm. All power belongs to God. Okay. Satan's power is equally godly. Mm -hmm. He took it from God, isn't it? Well, he did. Yeah, he did. Okay. Satan has no. So, no. Okay. Yeah, so that yes. is how. So this is where what uh, where it's a very good regalia. Mm -hmm. It comes together with bows and arrows and okay. spears and other things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But then, so they wear this regalia to what to do some war to do dance. war dancing and uh -huh. that sort of thing. And the bull says where it to do the war dancing mm -hmm. with the buffalo horns and that sort of thing. Okay. So you see that we have the bull war dance. And this took uh, this and when they had to fight slavery, this like Samori and Baba too. Oh, that's during Samori again. Okay. Yes, uh, during the slave trade and that sort of thing. So the bulls. I heard of Samori when I came here. Yeah, the talents, the talents had it to fight any time they fought. They retreated into the mountains and that sort of thing. Till the okay. So it's when, made basically of what? Uh, this uh, this is of, uh, this it's is heavy. It's, 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 so it's heavy. It's woven from vertebra grass. Yes. And then the buffalo skin is put all around it. Wait, wait, wait. And then wait, we put. Wait, wait. This is so you kill the buffaloes to get this? No, um, buffaloes used to be killed, but then with the promulgation of the the, the, the poaching, the poaching mm -hmm. and all those things, I don't think a buffalo had been. So how do you get your raw materials now? No, some some die natural death. And there's the tail of a buffalo. No, as this well? is a horse. What's a horse, horse tail? Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. So it's basically woven yeah. with the buffalo skin. The skin. And then the horn and of, the uh, horn of uh, this. And this time, if you don't get which one is this? This this is uh, the horn of a, a cow. A cow. Yeah. Okay. But sometimes so the cow, the buffalo, the buffalo horn, and yeah. the goat yeah. combined. Combined. Interesting. Yeah, Interesting. Yeah, I think. Something. I think. Yeah. If you read the history of West Africa, you read about Sumanguru Kanti and that's yeah, yeah. Some of this leather was even made of human being skin. Oof. Human being skin, elephant skin, white white skin, wow. and so a skin could be made of all so comfortable. It's 335 species. No, it's because you did today is your first time. Okay. We put shear butter on it. Oh, okay. And then with the shear butter will uh, will make it very soft mm. to match your head and that ends it. <laughs> Yeah, maybe, since maybe, it is going maybe, to be for you, and, no, no, no. It's it. You can widen it. 
then you can bring it back. Oh, really? Yeah. Once you, you apply the shea mm -hmm. butter and yeah, put it in the sun, it takes wow, that shape. Wow, that's interesting. That is a, that's a good experience to yeah, cherish. Well, it's time to hand it over to you. Yeah. Back so to you. Um, Thanks a lot for yeah. this experience. Every I, chief, I every really male son in the in north, especially the Fred tradition, you need to have this. You need oh. to have this. And you need to have the bag, you know, the bag that is uh, hung over In the, modern times? In modern times. And every female, Fra Fra woman, when I say Fra Fra, Minko Safis, Talisis, from Bongo, from all the Fra Fres, I mean, once you are a Fra Fra, you need to have this. The other thing is the, the where we put the calabash, we call that the zauna, I mean, where you can see yeah, that see thing that there with the yes, calabash yes. is there. Every Fra Fra woman who calls herself a woman need to have that thing. Because it is a no goal area for your husband. Your husband can touch any part of your properties. He can go into your bag, set your bag. But anytime you put anything inside that, uh, listen, the set of calabashes that is hung in the other day, in the, you know, that's, uh, listen, no husband, no reasonable husband will put his hand on inside that thing. If you put your hand in there, then what No, you defile your matrimonial home. So in you situations do where a man is probably cheating on his wife or the wife no, is cheating on you don't husband, go. you don't you go the there. Bags, you're not you, supposed to go no, in you don't go there. It's, it's none of no your go. business. It's none of your business. Even with this one, when the woman dies, it's the first born girl mm. who will have access to the mother's this. So you call all the sisters around and then they will look in there. Mm. If the mother kept gold away from the husband, that's where she would be. Oh, if she kept any culture. history from the husband, the man, or the whole household, this is where yeah. she would keep it. I think and I think we have to come back again really, yeah, to so take us to the history of yeah, you know so the, the culture of the Fra yeah, and yeah, you know exactly. other prominent tribes within the, the three yeah. northern regions. Yeah. I'm glad. I, I really yeah. appreciate your time. Thanks. So we'll come back again and then we'll have Thanks. a conversation. Thanks so Thank much. Thank you so much. Organizations like SADA and some of the, 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 the regional organizations that we set up should be able to harness the, 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 this, the, the, I mean, the, the, the sense of the youth into things like this because the youth they know, I mean, we have, it's, like, it's like genetics. The entire north, especially you take Bulga and then we are born with the leather handicraft, we are born with the artwork. And there is a diversity display of the Northern Savannah Equilibrium Zone culture that you can actually have access to. Right away from smocks to animal skins and using straws to make hats and several other products that would actually be very convincing or that will actually appeal to the interest and taste of tourists are in the Bulgarian craft market. In this country, you can easily have things modified to your taste. So should we not stop giving the excuse of it not being polished enough or the finishing being poor and therefore be more willing to invest in someone else's product? And by the way, all that glitters is not gold. I know that a lot of the things that we buy that are, look like they're perfect last like three, six months and you have to buy it again. The people have been doing it. They will continue to do, just assist them to do it as they used to do it. You can do it all the way from Hameli to Boku, from Kita to Axim, and the, you know, the whole Ghana can support, I mean, such products. That's where the jobs are created. And obviously our, our slogan and our catchphrase is that we want to be a prosperity partner as an investment promotion center. Prosperity for the investor in the profits that they will make, but also prosperity for the country in the number of jobs that will be created. Come to the Sada Zone as the first tourist destination. Come to Bolgatanga and you see the fascinating craft industry. This is the home of the Gambagal Scarp, one of the striking physical geological features of Ghana, stretching 60 to 65 kilometers from east to west of the savannas. It is located in the Bungbungu Yongyo district in the Upper East region of Ghana. The area boasts of several tourism attractions, including a waterfall, its rich tradition and culture, as well as many other landmarks.
This is Nairi. Nairi means the whole Mampurugu, including Dagbam and that of Bimbila. Itself, by its, its name, meant a tourism for, uh, for this place. Entering, entering the palace, you could see that there are some designs, locally built designs. You can see it everywhere in Ghana. It is only the northern part of this country that you can see all those things. So, this place, even when nicely built, Will look more attractive than what you are seeing now. When we have enskinment, it's a form of entertainment because chiefs will come and dance. When we have Dambe Festival, chiefs will come and dance. The same thing as even Fire Festival. During the Fire Festival, if the, 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 the month sets in, we count the days from the one to the, 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 the last day, which is the tenth day. That's the, that's the end of Damba. So for the first day, we celebrate the Damba during the night. We dance till the, till dawn. So these are all things that give Nairi some form of entertainment. Behind me, you can find the Nigerian War. Nigerian War was put up by one of the kings of Mampurugu. The king of Mampurugu has some of his subjects in today Burkina Faso because the Moses originated from Mampurugu. Then we have the three, three other the tribes originating from Mampuru as well. That is the Dagomba, the Dagombes, the Nanumbes, and Mampuruses. They are coming from the king of Mampuru. So Nigeria was one of our, the kings of Mampuru in the 1850, 1852. This king, according to the tradition and culture of Mampuru, if you are physically deformed, you cannot come up to the skins. You cannot become a king of Mampurugu or even any skins in Mampurugu. And unfortunately for this king, he had only one son who was deformed, one eye blind. So it gave him a big thought to find out who will inherit him when he dies. And that time, there were a lot of wars all over the place. So he called his council of elders. He summons his council of elders and asked them, you have seen that my predecessor, Nabatawa, he was able to conquer a lot of war, I mean, battles and have the, the kingdom. So who will inherit me when I die? Once my child, my son, my only son is even deformed. So he told, the, he gave this problem to the elders. And the elders advise him that he has to put a wall. Once people are, their enemies are coming around to attacking them every day. So they ask him to put, they advise him or suggested to him to put up a wall. And this is how this wall came about. The king of Mampro conquered a vast land. We had Farafres, Moses, the Gatis, name them. There were a lot of other tribes under the jurisdiction of the king of Mampuru. So this king, Nigeria, summons all the tribes to come in tents. And they didn't use ordinary water to put up this wall. It will interest you to know that they used honey, shea butter, and cow milk to put up this wall. And during the building, any man or anybody who complained of being tired was also executed. He was put on the wall. He was put, back, he was put on the wall for the construction to continue. So people, it deterred them from being lazy. So these were the two things, the three things they used in putting up this wall. And the eastern part, you will see that the eastern part, is, it, it didn't cover the eastern part of Nalergo because we had one king, queen. Then Dan Puanaba, 
who was very who was also a very powerful queen queen mother like the Ashanti Ejisu. So this queen mother told the, the then Nairi to leave the eastern part for she and her warriors. They will protect the kingdom for the Nairi. So this was how the, the war came about. And with, the, with our tradition, if you are deformed, even if you are from the royal family and you are deformed, you cannot become a king. You cannot inherit the skins. So this man put up this wall so that his name would not be forgotten. His only son. So the wall was put on the western and southern part of Nalergo to, to protect the enemies from coming in. And when the sun goes down around six, they didn't have watches by then. They were only looking at the sun. When the sun was sinking, they would use locks to close the main road so that enemies cannot come into the town. Then, when the sun is up again, they get the guys to come and open the locks and then people could go in and out, out of the place. We have an addict in Mampu that it is the ear who knows the, the grandparent, but the eye does not know him. So from here, say, they say the wall was very high. By that time, they didn't have tape measures to measure the height. And I, my neighbor, grew up to see the wall as high as six, more than six feet. We have a lot of attraction, center of attraction uh, tourism in the area. We have some cave in Zarantanga. We have another chain on the Gambaga Scarp. This chain, you go to pull it. As long as you pull it, it will follow you. As long as you pull it, it will follow you. As soon as you leave it, it goes back into the hole. But when you come, you see about three or four rings of it. And you think maybe somebody have just dropped that chain. But I bet you pick it and then it will follow you. We have another cave in Zarantenga. And we have some Arabic inscriptions on that cave. We have the Moses graves in Gambaga. We also have the witch camp. These days we don't call them witches, we call them only this home. So these are all center of attractions for East Mampresi district. Another point of interest is the dam. You see the dam. This is where they got the, the soil. They dug the soil to put up this wall. And this well, this dam has, has never dried up. It has never dried up. And we even have some of our shrines as Kolkoldais, but because of the population, Kolkoldais, yeah, we, the king will go to make some sacrifice, but these days we don't see them often. So these are all sets of attractions. We could have even put up some small room and then have this history written. Then when you come and you can read, we just give you the history and then you read. Then, then maybe extract you can photocopy and then send that message away. And then we'll have a caretaker who will sit around to tax, you know, to get some, some token from visitors coming in. Talenti district of the Upper East region of Ghana is the community of Tungo, a beautiful cultural landmark by virtue of its hills, rock formation, architecture, caves and shrines, an area with a population of about 5,000 inhabitants, mostly traditionalists with a few Christians and Muslims, predominantly farmers engaged in the cultivation of rice, soya beans, millet and groundnuts. We first pay a curtsy call at the Chief's Palace to announce our intentions. Now the tour begins. It's because of the strand that they are calling Tungu Tungu. And the reason of Tungu Tungu is if you go to the strand 
or if you are having any problem that facing you and you are going to destroy it, to tell the son that I have this problem, this problem is facing me. If you are able to solve my problem for me, I shall come and pay you a donkey or cow or sheep or goat or fire, depend the way you promise. But most of the people used to promise a donkey. Donkey is more powerful than all the animals. As I know, we have a donkey cave. If you go there, you will see donkey scouts there plenty. Those promise and they go and their parents off and they come and buy the donkey for us and we we'll make a sacrifice to this land. Time to see the chief priest who had a few words to share. I say that if you are coming to consult, at first you buy two farms, one guinea farm, snap, cola, tobacco, salt, millet that we use for pito, and then the whole that we use for farm. I didn't know that one. You buy those things, and then those things that you send to the sand that somebody come, and then the person is having a problem. So the person can come or he cannot come. And then there that the sign will say that you bring the person this time. Now you can come. Or you so wait. Who do you for. Talk to the shrine? Spirits? Yeah, it's spirit. The sign we don't see. We don't see the shrine. So you talk to spirits? Yes. Okay, but you can convert it into cash. Right? Yes. And we can't see the sign, but we can hear the talking. And then how to hear the talking is. If you are a small boy, you can and you cannot understand the language. It's like if you are 30 boy, and then you know that you are an amateur, they will give you a medicine to take. When you take that medicine, you then understand the language. Something interesting catches my attention. Most of the young men are clothed in animal skin. It's here, our four forefathers, they are having a festival. That festival is called Gulbu Festival. And that festival is here. This month, uh, we, for us, we don't know the reason why they used to unwear their shirts. Even it's about four days now that we did it. But at the age you see, I can, you see her wearing shirts and trousers. But that month, he used to come march or end of March. So the man is up. So that man, we don't wear shirt, we don't marry, we don't fight. Even if you're working yourself in youth, yeah, you can sex, but you can't marry. But if you're working yourself in youth, your leg or anything that used you to cut you and black them out, you have to pay for that one. And the reason why we are doing that, you see, that festival, if we not even make the festival and then it rains, always it rains, we can't farm. Some people promise that they will come and stay here because of our rocks, the natural rocks. That people have been saying that they will come and stay, they will come back. I don't know, the reason why they are not even here because of the light, no lights. But people even told us that they will come and build a, a hotel here to stay here, especially at Hawaii. They used to come and say we, they will come and stay here, but because of no lies that we are not. But if there is lies here, plenty of people will even come and build their houses here. Here we call Donkey Cave. Mm. And the reason why we are calling here Donkey Cave is you see, you can even see yourself, scouts oh. are there. Oh, donkey. It's so donkey, the head, that. And the reason why you are seeing this is if you have a problem and come to the shrine, and say, I have this problem. If you are able to solve my problem for me, I shall come and pay you a donkey. As I told you. Because it's not only donkey. Cow is there, goat is there, sheep is there, anything apart from human being. The shrine normal take the blood and then the liver. And for the flesh, we will take it. The flesh? Yes. After taking the flesh, we have to bring the skull here. And then we can make. So you, guys, you eat the donkey? Yes. We can make a sacrifice of a donkey. And the strand say we shouldn't attach anything, we should leave it. So this one, we shouldn't touch it. 
so we will leave it there. So if we leave it there, the next day, if you go there, you will not see the donkey there. You will you find see, the carcass. Yeah, you will not see anything. You will only see the skull there. Wow. And then you will bring it to put it here. And the skull that you are seeing here, we have time. If that, that time is up, they used to convey all and brew pitu. I think, I don't know, you, you know pitu, local drink. Yeah, we know Yeah. So we we'll use that one and brew pitu and drink and then we we'll start again. So you drink from the skull of a donkey? Yes, they will use this one and brew the pitu. In soil to use wood, you know you, you use, oil. yes, this one and boil it. Wow. And then they will start again and be counting. These people come to consult with the sun or to promise with the sun that they are growing soft and they get how they want. That's the thing that you see the number of, if we see the number of the skulls, you see how people, the people that promise. Yeah. And yeah. these are people from Accra, from everywhere? It's everywhere, not Accra alone, outside the country. Ghanaians? Ghanaians and then the non Ghanaians too. Okay, yes. shall we go to the shrine? Yeah, yeah. Yes. It's not easy, honestly. I don't know how how far we have climbed, but climbing up the mountain on I mean steep rocks is no joke. That is the Tongo Shrine, which I'm told is a panacea or a cure to or even a response to the many problems that people have. People from many places or walks of life come here to visit the Tongo Shrine. We were told earlier that there are requirements that you have to meet before you can actually be taken to the shrine with a chief priest and before you actually enter the shrine we are told that you'd have to take off your shirt take your shirt off roll up your trousers to your knee and take your shoes off at this point no camera is allowed but that is the Tungo shrine if you are a woman to if you want to take off your shirt and your breath yeah. yes. and you go uh, in there naked? Uh, yeah. You would not your breath. No, you wear something. So if you're in your menses? Right here. Yeah. yeah, if you're menses, you can. You can oh, go there when you're yes. in your menses. So what do you see when you enter the shrine? No human being? No. So the chief priest will accompany you to the shrine? Yes. Like if you come to people, they will go inside. Okay. Soon it is nightfall and time to head back to the chief's palace to say thank you for a warm reception. He makes a few important comments. <laughs> And we don't have fine building. The tourist people one day came and tired. So they have to do something here. When they go round around and tired, they have to play. They will get a place and rest. Nothing at all for that one. And no latency, no latrix. This is like uh, in the night, you know, white people cannot sleep darkness like that. Even we all, all of us, we lack darkness. Our road to our road. Drift road is very, very dangerous. Car fall there. Nine cars fall up, fall there, up the hill. Nine cars, then we we'll tell the people that if they are coming, they have to stop and drop, let the people all drop down before they are crowded. And here is a tourist site. Quite a people can take one vehicle more than 100 people. Crop the hill. And universities, the students, they used to come 100, 200 a day, but the hill, we're afraid of the hill. All the time we complain for everyone. The people of Tongo Tenzuk deserve a share of the national cake. 
I can't believe that in 2015, the whole area is actually in darkness. No electricity. And it would amaze you the kind of tourist attraction that you see here when you come here by day. At the moment, it's total darkness. I can see barely nothing. Everybody is worn out. It's been a beautiful experience climbing up the mountain, seeing beautiful um, strata of um, rock formation. And this is an experience that I will personally cherish for a long time to come. So from Tongo Tenzok in the upper east region, it is bye bye for now. This is Ghana's Northern Savannah Ecological Zone, a place where great things happen. <laughs>